Being born and raised in the Appalachian Mountains, I've experienced a lot of unexplainable things, and I'm not the only one. Today I'm going to be sharing a story with you that a follower sent to my email. I moved to Pennsylvania right after turning 15. Before that, I lived on the West Coast, so I had no knowledge of what happened in the Appalachian Mountains. Nothing about those rules like closing your curtains at night or not responding to your name being called when nobody's around. In our house, we had a crawl space on the second floor. I had claimed the bedroom with the door to the crawl space. And once summer started next year, I started hearing scratching coming from inside of the crawl space. I thought it was a squirrel, but my dad couldn't find anything inside. The scratching continued, but I ignored it. At some point, I thought I could hear my name being called from behind the door. Now, my parents were very religious. I was taught that if I heard my name being called, it was the Holy Ghost trying to tell me something or trying to comfort me. I said a silent prayer to myself when I heard my name being called in that house. I think I had really just got lucky and I had moved out of that bedroom and into a different bedroom without the crawl space after my sister had left for college and I got to move into her room. I had another experience in that house soon after I turned 18. I was packing up my bags getting ready to move away from college and I had a lot of anxiety because of that. Something that helped me was getting fresh air. It was already nighttime, but I stepped out on the back porch to get some fresh air. The moon was really bright that night and I could see most of the yard very well. It was a large yard, roughly six acres, with a creek and a wooded area to one side, a hill and a wooded area on the opposite side of the creek, and behind a small pond in the back of the yard was the road. I knew this area had animals that were out and about, especially late at night, so I took a look around to see if I could spot a fox or a deer. At the road, I could see what looked like two glowing eyes attached to some figure. It looked like a deer, but it was staring at me. And the porch light was on, so it was very clearly lit. I thought it was kind of cool until it started getting closer. The yard was massive, and there was a rough three to four acres of land between the road and the house. This thing was moving fast and moving very intently. It got over the guardrail and was making a straight line towards me. Even with the moonlight, I couldn't really make out what it was, but at that moment, I thought it was like a wolf or something. I ran inside, locked the doors, turned out the light, and ran into my bedroom. I spent the rest of the night underneath of my blankets and muttering prayers to myself. In the morning, I told my dad about the animal I had saw outside last night, and he had only found some scratches on the wood on the porch. I once dreamed of living in the privacy of the deep Pennsylvania woods, but then I read some of the dark stories from the Appalachian Trail, and I later decided... Maybe not. From Maine all the way to Georgia, the Appalachian Trail boasts the beauty of over 2,000 miles of eight national forests, six national park units, and many state parks, forests, and game lands. But as we know, darkness is often very attracted to light, and even something as beautiful as the Appalachian Trail has witnessed its demons, including the hiking enthusiasts who have made the journey. Some hikers have even taken to the internet to share their stories about the unsettling encounters they've had while on the trail. Like this hiker, for example, who details their experience with the mountain people on the trails of Northeast Pennsylvania. Pause the video here to read their story. Along with these creepy encounters, there have also been 10 confirmed and documented murders on the Appalachian Trail, the first one in 1974 in Georgia, and also three that happened in Pennsylvania. One of these horrific double murders on the trail took place in 1990 at the Thelma Mark Shelter near the top of Cove Mountain in Duncannon, PA. It was here that a young 25 and 26 year old couple was shot and stabbed to death by a crazed man who was also a wanted killer running from the police in Florida. And the details of this tragedy are absolutely horrifying. If you'd like a part two that walks through the story, let me know in the comments. In the meantime, I just have to know. What strange encounters have you had, if any, on the Appalachian Trail? Share your stories in the comments. Let's get weird. So this is a story that I mentioned in passing last night in the comments in response to someone else's personal story. And this is a story my dad told me from when he was younger. Everybody lost their mind when they read that comment and was like, story time, story time, story time. Um, again, this was a story that my dad told me when I was a kid, so I couldn't remember the details. My dad is old. He goes to bed at 8, 8 p.m. on the dot. So I couldn't remember enough to make a story time until this morning. He just called me. He's getting ready to go to work. And he told me the story, so here we go. The one detail he left out in this story was how old he was when this happened, but I know he was young. He was probably preteen. And he and his friend were out gin singing. They were up in the hills. And he said they walked for about an hour. So I assume, you know, close to a couple miles. And he said they get out in the middle of the woods and there's this big clearing and they can see car hoods. And it looked like they had took the part that meets the windshield where it kind of scoops in. And they had stuck them into the ground and it made a big circle. 
He said when they walked up to it, it was a complete circle of the car hoods and on top was the remnants of a tarp. He said that it looked like they had put the car hoods like that and made kind of like a shelter and then put a tarp on top, but it had been so long, the tarp had rotted off so there was just kind of pieces of it everywhere. They get over to it, they look down into it, and there is a complete human skeleton laying there. There are no clothes, there are no shoes, there is nothing but the skeleton, and it's missing its head. So they start to freak out. They start running, don't know what direction they're running in, so they start running a different direction. And upon running in the direction they were going to, they find the head that was on a stake a couple of uh, football fields away. So they continue freaking out. They run, and they end up coming out on a road that's called Red Dog Road. They end up going home, telling their parents, calling the cops. The cops come out and make them go back to Red Dog Road and make them walk back into the woods where they had been or where they thought they had been. Um, they get up there and the police chief is standing there with them with his hand on his pew pew the whole time and um, Dad said you could see like there was genuine concern genuine fear They collected all of the evidence they collected the car parts they collected everything cleaned it up and He said that as far as he knows he was told that it was probably in connection to the KKK to the Klan um, and that that was the only explanation that they ever got I don't know much about the KKK. I've never really looked into it. I know it's a real thing. I know it was prominent in West Virginia, Kentucky, but I've never heard of them doing that sort of thing as a practice. So it makes me wonder if it truly was something like that or if it was something about maybe people who live in the mountains and they was an outsider and they did, I don't know. Like, But you also have things like the old witches that lived in the woods and there's so many stories that come out of these woods that honestly you don't know what's going on my father is in full support of me doing these stories he said he has a ton of stories as well as his friends um his cousins my mom my grandparents so i have stories like this for days of just weird things that have happened in these mountains Talking about SW, and three minutes later, this happened. What's wrong with it? Over where? Hey! What are you doing over there? Tell me a ghost story that sounds completely unbelievable but is entirely i actually have the craziest ghost story that directly affected me during college so i'm from pittsburgh pennsylvania and i went to a small catholic college about an hour outside of the city in like a rural area um, in the allegheny mountains which are a subsection of the appalachian mountains so this is my college, it's St. Vincent College in Latrobe, PA, and as you can see we have a basilica, like a church, on campus. We also have a monastery with monks and priests. Some of them are even our professors, 
and it's a beautiful campus. I had a great four years, but I am convinced that this place is haunted and it's honestly like an open secret. Even the religious um, congregation and stuff, they, they don't deny it. So the faculty and staff and even like alumni and students have ghost stories and urban legends that they tell about the school and they're just like kind of like a fun part of the campus culture but there is actually like a lot of spiritual energy on this campus mainly because there's a large religious influence but also our dorms are right against a decently sized cemetery my sophomore dorm was actually right up against it um and so what happened to me lasted a little bit over a year it actually went from my freshman year into my sophomore year so now you have the background on my college campus but what happened to me was just a bunch of consecutive events it wasn't like one big thing um and there was of course like a peak where things got pretty intense so my freshman dorm had these things called pods where just big living spaces for the same gender so you had about 10 rooms on the outside of the pod and then you had a living area and um, bathrooms and showers in the center so there were anywhere from like 15 to 20 girls living in one pod in our pod in particular I experienced a lot of weird things from the start um, showers turning on whenever you walk into the bathroom um, there was always knocking late at night within the walls and this isn't coming from another room like they were cinder block walls you cannot knock to the other rooms and it would also jump from wall to wall our rooms had really heavy wooden doors and i remember this because whenever you would close them like it would kind of click so you knew the door was completely shut and all the time my door would just like open up um also my closet we had like closets that open like this like you pull them open um I would be sitting in bed doing my homework or schoolwork and the closet doors would just like crack open or like slowly open while I'm sitting there and I'm watching it like with my own two eyes so one night I decided to have my guy friends over and I had like one guy friend in particular but these were like his friends so they came to see my room and everything and they were sitting um up against my bed or like my desk and I had a picture framed above my desk and it had like the glass um, cover on the front and so we're just sitting there talking and this is like mounted to the wall like it's not coming off this is this picture like I very much loved this picture and did not want it to fall off the wall so we're sitting there and there is a guy directly under the picture it just like all of a sudden comes off the wall and breaks and it wasn't even hanging there it like was like boom like off the wall everybody stopped what they were doing and we're like what the hell but we were like whatever that can be explained then one night um me and my roommate are walking through the graveyard just to go on a walk because that is our scenery and i'm saying bye to my roommate i'm like i'm gonna go over to my guy friend's dorm so we can study for this chemistry test so we're just sitting in his room studying i'm kind of close to the door and we hear like a single knock on the door and we're like oh um let's not answer it what if it's a ra like we don't want to get in trouble there's alcohol in the room so we ignore it 15 minutes later or so there's two louder knocks on the door and we're like okay is someone playing a prank on us so we wait a little bit and then we open the door no one's there we're like okay someone's messing with us some more time passes okay and all of a sudden there's three loud knocks on the door and i'm right by the door i swing it open and no one is there like no one would have time to run away from the door we would have heard them we would have seen them um we're so creeped out we get out of the room and we go to like the other rooms in his pod and we like are like hey like are you pranking us um these guys are like in bed um 
no one's up or hanging out in the living area everyone is like no one's messing with you what are you even talking about we didn't hear any knocks so are the appalachian mountains really haunted from someone who's been there multiple times over many years hell yeah they are for reference here's me as a child in a, a cabin we had up in the woods uh, no neighbors around for miles this was one of our two cabins up in the appalachian mountains we no longer own it as you can see from me being a kid to a young adult, I have a lot of experience of exploring, traveling, and really weird shit in Appalachia. So one day I was going on a hike in the Appalachian Mountains by myself, and I came along this tunnel. And it's a very long tunnel, as you can see, very dark. And um, I was like, fuck it, why not? I'm gonna go through it, you know, I'm gonna get to the other side. I shit you not, um, when I went through it, not only did I feel like I was being watched the entire time, I know it's dark, paranoia, I shit you not. I heard whispers. There were people or things or entities whispering to me. And I'm not I'm not a schizophrenic, you know. There's some serious dark shit when you travel deep in Appalachia. If you're walking in the woods in Appalachia and you hear something or you see something, no you didn't. I say that all the time for a reason, folks. If you see it, no you don't. If you hear it, no you don't. Look away, walk away. Go watch that creator story time. It's so freak. But one of the key moments that happens is she hears a little girl's voice. But it's mechanical doesn't sound human. Mechanical voice. Sounds familiar. I heard something very similar. Now mine wasn't female, but still. There are a lot of things in the woods that want to get you to come investigate them. Because if for some reason they can't get to you, they can't get near, let's say, a fire like she was. But if they can get you to come to them, they're in business, baby. So they're going to mimic things. They're going to lure you. So it's integral that you keep your wits about you. We're not trying to be the first girl here. We're trying to be the last girl. Don't go investigate things. If you see a chest in the middle of the woods, don't go open it. You hear what sounds like a robot baby say hello? You're not going to go find it, okay? You're going to look away, you're going to walk away, and you're going to hit the bricks. You're going to get to step. And keeping an animal on you is just another layer of protection. Animals are attuned to things. Quiet woods are dangerous woods. If the birds stop singing, you need to get out. If there are no bugs chirping, you need to get out. Lots of critters out there like to mimic. Don't let yourself get fooled. Stay safe, my fine forest friends. Like 10 years ago, I got chased out of my family's woods by something that I think was Bigfoot. I grew up on about 100 acres of land in the Appalachian Mountains. So we had the farmland and then we had three mountains. And I know every inch of the land like the back of my hand. If you walk to the clifftop on the mountain behind my mom's house, it opens up to like this beautiful view of the valley below. It takes like two hours to walk there. And there are caves up there. I've never been brave enough to go in them, but my aunt said that the last time she had walked up there, personally, she heard chanting coming from the caves. That did not steer me away. For privacy reasons, I'm not gonna be using my friend's real name. We'll call her Jenny. So me and Jenny decided we were gonna walk to the cliff. It was a beautiful fall day. The weather was perfect. So we get to the back side of the cliff and I started feeling incredibly uneasy. I didn't share how I was feeling with Jenny. I just told her that we should sit down for a little bit because I was tired and that we needed to rest. All we had to do was climb up the back of the cliff and we would have been where we were going. But I had this overwhelming gut feeling telling me to stop. So that's what we did. I tried to play it cool. I laid the blanket down. We laid down. I was burning a smudge stick. I don't talk much when I'm in the woods because I'm listening to what's around me. So that's what I was doing, just listening. And to the left, pretty far away, I heard footsteps, which immediately put me on alert. Jenny was just laying there. I don't think she even realized that something was happening. And then I heard this thing walk behind us. It was walking really slow, but whatever it was, was on two feet and it was really heavy. I could hear its big feet crunching on the leaves and it only had two feet. It was taking two steps at a time. Eventually I heard it on the right side of us. And at this point, I realized that this thing was circling us. It was stalking us. It could definitely see us. So I told Jenny like, hey, not to alarm you, but I think that something is watching us and we need to get the fuck out of here. What does she do? She gets up, she grabs the blanket, and she runs. And I'm like in shock at this point because I know you're not supposed to run. But she was running and I heard the footsteps start to get quicker. So I'm a really fast runner and I know that Jenny was not familiar with my mom's property or just the woods in general because she was a city girl. So I caught up with her to show her the way back. I have never ran so fast in my life. 
We were fucking getting it. The whole time being chased. We could hear the loud ass footsteps behind us, but we did not turn to look. So we finally make it out of the woodline to my mom's house. Our dog is raising hell at the woodline for the next few hours. I told my mom I thought we were being chased by Bigfoot and she told me I was crazy. But later that night, my aunt and uncle live next door on the same property. My uncle goes outside to turn off the water on the side of his house. It was pitch black dark, you know, because there's no lights there. It is the mountains. And he said something huge ran at him from out of the woods. It ran him all the way back in his house. It had to be the same thing that chased us out of the woods and my dog was raising hell at. As someone who was born and raised in and still lives in the Appalachian Mountains, I've experienced a lot of unexplainable things. And I guess now it's a thing for me to tell those stories to you guys. But also I've seen people in the comments saying they've experienced similar things or different things but equally unexplainable. And I'd love to hear y'all's stories. If you're comfortable with me reading your story on my TikTok, completely anonymous, either DM it to me on IG or email it to AllieShaysWorld at gmail.com. Like my username, but at gmail.com. Anyways, I'm going to tell y'all about a story that I was talking to my cousin about just the other day. Let me set the scene. We were asleep in her living room floor. And I know y'all are going to call this like mass hallucination or whatever. I already know it's coming. You don't have to believe me, but I asked her the other day if she remembers this. And she remembers it just as vividly as I do. We both remember it plain as day. Anyways, we're both laying there, supposed to be asleep. And this thing just like misted through the window, if that makes sense. Like it looked like foggy or cloudy or whatever, and then it came in and it was a figure. And the best way I can describe it is it looked like a garden gnome or like a troll. I have no idea. As a kid, I remember thinking it was in like a wizard costume or something. It gave us really bad vibes though. It just like apparated through the window, stood there and stared at us, and then back out the closed window it went. We tried waking her dad up, but he wouldn't wake up. I know it sounds weird. We thought it was weird. We still think it's weird. 